Hello all. So now uh, our topic is regarding nucleus, which is the master mind of the cell. At the same time, we are going to discuss about chromosomes. So in this, you will be getting regarding Lamprey chromosomes, polyteen chromosomes. Okay. So we'll discuss about those things in this class. And from neat wise, some of the important questions also will be discussed. So first thing is nucleus. So the story of the nucleus begin with Anton von Leeuwenhoek, who is a lens maker. Okay. So Leeuwenhoek. He is the one who first observed nucleus in RBC of the fish. Because uh, we, our, our matured RBC will not have the nucleus, but fish RBC will have the nucleus, RBC of fish. But the credit goes to Robert Brown. But the whole credit goes to Robert Brown. So in 1831, because he first studied regarding nucleus in orchid root cells, okay, root cells. But first observed by Anton von Leeuwenhoek, but detailed study of the nucleus is given by Robert Brown. So the credit of discovery also goes to Robert Brown. So actually nucleus, we all know nucleus is a double membrane bounded cell organelle. You will be having, okay, let me draw one small picture of nucleus. And you know one interesting thing, 50% of the surface area of nucleus is actually occupied by nuclear pores. So you will be having double walled Membrane. There are uh, semi-autonomous cell organelles in the cell, which also will be having uh, double membrane bounded. Okay, and the nucleus, the master mind of the cell, is also having double membrane bounded. And you can see one more stained particle that is nucleolus, and this part. So we'll label it. This is outer membrane. Uh, we'll go with some other color, so it would be far beneficial. And this part we call it as inner membrane. And here we have a perinuclear space, the space between the outer membrane and inner membrane, we call it as perinuclear space. And we have uh, lightly stained euchromatin. And as well as darkly stained heterochromatin. So together we call it as chromatin. And first labeling and later uh, uh, we'll discuss about these things. And here we have the ribosomes, okay, ribosomes. And here we have the nucleoplasm or we otherwise call it as karyolems. This is just a moment. Nucleoplasm. And next we have the nuclear pore. Nuclear pore. So these are the parts. Okay. So we'll go with in detail about nucleus. So nucleus is a double membrane bounded protoplasmic body. So you can found nucleus in protoplasm as well as in protoplast, which controls major cell metabolism, which means cell reactions, chemical reactions. And and this mainly encloses the genetic material, which is the blueprint of the body. And we call the nucleus as controller or director of the cell because it has even many names, mastermind of the cell, brain of the cell. 
importance of the nucleus is majorly it has to control the heredity because it contains the dna the genetic material and growth and metabolism so it was experimentally proved by the scientist called hammerling he is the one who proved that nucleus is responsible with all of these things nucleus is responsible nucleus is responsible for hereditary growth and metabolism so this experiment they have done in acetabularia okay acetabularia this is actually uh, single celled algae largest single celled algae so single celled largest algae that is acetabularia in that they have studied all these things the study was done by hammerling and if the nucleus of the cell is experimentally removed you know the unicellular organisms will die because for example if our brain is the major controller if our brain connection is not there then we are neuro neurologically dead physiologically we are living but neurologically dead but when you go with the unicellular organisms if we remove the nucleus obviously the cell will die because the nucleus is very important to them so generally eukaryotic cell contains at least one nucleus but uh, uh, nucleus is absent in certain cells also for example in phloem uh, sieve tube cells in the phloem we have sieve tube cells in the sieve tube cells the nucleus is absent and in mature rbc of mammals the nucleus is absent but uh, in camel and llama uh, even though they are mammals the mature rbc even the mature rbc also consists of nucleus so that to be noted okay so these are the points are actually from the previous question papers so camel and llama these two organisms or these two creatures consists of nucleus even in mature rbc as well okay and the next thing is we are going to see regarding dikaryote dikaryotic means having two nucleus dikaryotic so the very importantly you will remember regarding paramecium so paramecium is dikaryotic which consists of micronucleus as well as macronucleus so micronucleus is mainly for controlling the cell functions macronucleus so micronucleus sorry micronucleus is mainly for reproduction purpose macronucleus is for growth metabolism remaining all the functions movement for all those things so dikaryotic condition remember karyo means nucleus next thing uh, what is cenocytic condition syncytium cenocytic condition ante so which means cenocytic uh, you will be far familiar about uh, these terminology cenocytic cells syncytium so what is cenocytic cenocytic is nothing but these are the type of cells which form free nuclear division for example endosperm which is cenocytic endosperm so we have liquid endosperm which is coconut water endosperm and next we have the rhizopus so rhizopus uh, you can see the fungus for bread usually the gray colored fungus for bread which area for all those things you can see the cenocytic condition okay and the next thing is syncytium so ucheria brankoffi will comes under asclehelminthes okay the next thing is uh, syncytium so is syncytium is actually formed by the fusion of cells cenocytic is free nuclear division which is only karyokinesis so the cytokinesis will be absent but syncytium is formed by the fusion of cells this is also multinucleated condition and this is also multinucleated condition so you have the stripped muscles so our skeletal muscles are syncytium which is multinucleated condition right i hope uh, you now you got the difference between cenocytic and syncytium cenocytic is having karyokinesis no cytokinesis but syncytium is formed by the fusion of uh, many cells and next so let's go with the structure now now we'll go with the structure part so nuclear membrane or we otherwise call it as nuclear envelope 
we are we also call it as karyotheca because that is the covering of the nucleus and coming to the nucleoplasm so we call the nucleoplasm our karyoplasm our karyolin and remaining all this uh, chromatin material we call it as chromatin net and we have the nucleolus which we otherwise call it as the ribosomal factory because the ribosomes need our rna and at the same time proteins that are actually synthesized from nucleolus the stained particle present in the nucleus and we have the nuclear first we'll go with the nuclear material nuclear membrane so actually the nucleus is surrounded by two unit membranes we otherwise call it as a double membrane bounded cell organelle even the nucleus is also double membrane bounded cell organelle we have two membranes one is outer membrane and the other one is inner membrane and the space between outer and inner membrane we call it as perinuclear space actually the outer membrane is connected with endoplasmic reticulum at several places and the ribosomes are also found you can see the ribosomes actually here and uh, the nuclear membrane will be having pores which we call it as nuclear pore complex we call this as nuclear pore complex which is around 300 to 1000 angstroms and uh, we we have a nucleoplasmin protein which is we call it as annulus which is annulus which will guard this nucleopore there is a protein content which is present near the nucleopore which we call it as annulus or all together pore and this annulus so pore plus annulus we call it as nuclear pore complex nuclear pore complex nuclear pore what it will do what it will do nuclear pore uh, will makes the proteins to move from nucleus to cytoplasm and also rna mrna rrna that got synthesized inside the nucleus will be exported to cytoplasm and next inner nuclear membrane is been lined by nuclear lamina so this structure is actually formed by lamina protein okay lamin protein and the pore complex provides the main channel actually this pore complex only will unite the nucleoplasm as well as the cytoplasm okay and next we'll go with the next thing nucleoplasm okay so the nucleoplasm or the otherwise call it as karyoplasm or karyolim because karyo means nucleus so we otherwise call it as nucleo sap also nuclear sap which is the major ground substance that is present in the nucleus it is actually uh, we contains the coiled substance nucleotides nucleosides and we have atps proteins enzymes dnas rnas polymerases endonucleases means the enzymes present inside the nucleus at the same time we have minerals calcium magnesium etc so you can see that nucleoplasm contains high concentration of nucleotides to form the triphosphate actually so we have the chromatin net and nucleo nucleolus these got embedded inside the nucleus okay so main nucleoplasm is the site for transcription transcription is nothing but production of mrna from dna we call it as transcription okay and next chromatin net so this chromatin net is very important because uh, chromatin net is actually composed of dna as well as histone proteins okay and the chromatin net is nothing but intranuclear it is usually stained with basic dye because it consists of more of uh, proteins and you can find the thread like appearance inside the nucleoplasm so it is mainly formed by dna deoxyribonucleic acid and histone proteins remember one very important thing dna is negatively charged which is acidic in nature histone proteins are positively charged which is basic in nature and the whole over the genetic information is been 
condensed into number of chromosomes during cell division. For example, we have the chromosomes of 46. So which is like 23 pairs, human, human chromosomes. And okay, so our entire uh, chromatin information is being condensed to form chromosomes. Okay, so that's one more thing. And chemically, if you see, uh, DNA will form 31 percentage. 31 percentage of the uh, chromatin material is consists of DNA, and RNA will be very less. So DNA is 31 percentage. RNA will be of two to five percentage. Histone proteins is of 36 percentage. So 36 percentage you have histone. And we have non-histone proteins also. That would be 28 percentage. So maximum amount is occupied by histone only. So that's why we go for basic diet. And we have a la relatively large amount of uh, two things. So that is arginine and lysine. So this is so far very important. Arginine and lysine. So these are the two things are uh, in higher level. And there are five types of histone proteins you will be having. That is H1, H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. Right? And coming to the next thing, uh, we have the, so this all together are being arranged as a nucleosome. And next thing, four and very most, we have two types of chromatin material. One is euchromatin. And other one is heterochromatin. Okay. So what is euchromatin? Euchromatin, you can see lightly stained. And actually, this chromatin is transcriptionally active, more active. Genetically as well as transcriptionally. And uh, we have uh, which lies usually center of the nucleus. And heterochromatin, go with reverse. Darkly stained, tightly bounded, and transcriptionally uh, less active or genetically less active. So uh, actually this heterochromatin will be very near to the nuclear membrane. Okay, So these are the two types of chromatin. And next, uh, in the heterochromatin also, we have two types, okay? So in heterochromatin also, you have two types. Constitutive heterochromatin and facultative. Facultative heterochromatin. So actually, constitutive, uh, constitutive heterochromatin will occur in all the cells in all the stages. So that's why we call, uh, you can see this in centromeres, centromeric region, because this chromatin will be must and should, it will be there. And next, facultative, it occurs in only some cells, for example, bar bodies. I hope you know what is bar body. You can see this in X chromosome. And uh, bar bodies are actually facultative heterochromatin. Uh, it is not seen in all the cells, in all the stages. Okay. So it will be seen in, uh, may, uh, usually seen in females. And uh, the number of bar bodies in the nucleus and in individual is minus one. Actually, for example, okay. So X minus one. So the number of X chromosomes minus one uh, bar bodies. So how to calculate the bar, bar body is, for example, females will be having two X chromosomes, two X minus one, okay? So then uh, the number of bar bodies in female is one. For males, you have only one X, X minus one. That means 
So, so x minus 1x. So, 1. x minus 1x. So, that is equal to 0. So, males, the bar body is 0 and the female is 1. Okay. So, and next, we'll see the major. We already have seen the major difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin. Euchromatin was very thin and uh, it is lightly stained. It is a part of chromatin. And here it is thickly coiled, condensed and very darkly stained. You could have seen this. Uh, genetically, it is more active. Genetically, it is less active. It lies in the center of nucleus. Here it lies in the periphery of the nucleus. We have uh, less histone proteins here. Here we have more histone proteins. That's why the staining will be more because we are using the basic dye. And it replicates uh, during the early S phase. This replicates during late S phase. Okay, so these are the major differences. So while uh, taking the video, while listening to the video, please do kindly take the notes for your information purpose. So you can see even the heterochromatin is lightly stained during M phase. Heterochromatin. is lightly stained during M phase and uh, darkly stained during interphase, obviously. So, and next thing we are going to see is nucleolus, ribosomal factories. So, nucleolus. Nucleolus is being discovered by Fontana. And the term is given by Bauman. So nucleolus is actually naked. You can see the nucleolus because there is no membrane bounded cell organelle. And one more thing, it is usually attached to the nucleolar chromatin material. And that is the specific site for the nucleolar organizer. So you call it as NOR. Nucleolar organizer region, NOR. <coughs> Excuse me. So the nucleolus is being <laughs> so the nucleolus is usually one, but in onion you have four. In you oocytes of amphibians, you will be having two thousand. So the nucleus, the nucleoli will be absent in muscle cells, sperm cells. We don't find nucleolus. But in oocytes of amphibians, it is 2000. Just remember that. And human genome has five NOR, nucleolar organizer region. And uh, if we need calcium for the maintenance of nucleolus. So calcium is very essential. So you can see in the late prophase, Nucleolus will disappear and it will reappear during telophase. It's very simple. And coming to the functions of nucleolus, nucleolus ribosomal formation. That is the chief role of nucleolus. Thus, we call it as the protein factories of the cell. The proteins of ribosomes are actually synthesized in cytoplasm, but it diffuses into nucleus and it will reach to the nucleolus. Hence, rRNA and ribosomal proteins are assembled to form new ribosomes which move to the cytoplasm through nuclear pores. So that's why the nuclear pore is very large. So through that it can proteins, this ribosomes can pass through. And next we have a karyosome. One more thing we call it as karyosome. At some place the heterochromatin will form a thick and darkly uh, stained, that we call it as karyosome. And coming to the entire functions of this nucleus is, so the nucleus consists of genetic material. So because genetic information is being present in chromatin material, which we otherwise call it as the storehouse of genetic information. And transmission of genetic information. Because nucleus will take part of transmission of genetic information from parent to daughter or from one generation to next generation. During cell division, 
the division of nucleus will take place first later on a division of cytoplasm will take place the entire metabolism like mrna synthesis sending the mrna to cytoplasm rrna synthesis sending the rrna and proteins assemblage to the cytoplasm will be actually done by nucleus and you can uh, see the variations in the genetic material of nucleus so which is actually the evolutionary role you can see the change in the genetic material prokaryotes eukaryotes starting from the remaining uh, fungi plants the nucleus will be keep on diffuse okay so that is foremost very very important thing about nucleus our next thing is we are going to start with chromosomes okay so what are chromosomes so uh, if you see uh, the chromosomes we will be identified like this structure so you will use the term chromosome only during cell division and this part we call it as centromere and you have to count the chromosomes so based on number of centromeres and here we have extensions we call this as kinetochore and these as chromatids and uh, this is primary constriction and here you will be having secondary constriction also and uh, this part we call it as satellite and this edge part we call it as telomere these are the parts of chromosomes at the time of cell division the chromatin material actual chromatin material will become coiled or condensed which we call it as chromosome chrome means color so means body so colored body chromatin material will be like thread chromosomes are like the bodies so chromosomes are not visible during interface you cannot see the chromosomes in interface but you can see it will be starting to condense in prophase and you can see very good in during metaphase so actually the chromosomes was first observed by hofmeister he is the one who first observed the chromosomes uh and one more scientist karl nageli he is the one uh, that uh, these both scientists have observed in pollen mother cells okay in pollen mother cells actually strasburger described the chromosomes that appear in nucleus during cell division actually they discovered the, these two people discovered the chromosomes in pollen mother cells but uh, the scientists call strasburger that uh, the, he described the chromosome structure that appear in nucleus during cell division so the credit of discovery of chromosomes goes to strasburger yes so the term chromosome was actually given by waldio and the term chromatin was actually given by fleming so these are the scientists name we have to remember so and the longest chromosome you will be seeing in trilium plant and you can see chromosome will be best studied during metaphase so you can see the size shape orientation whether it is uh, like metacentric submetacentric and uh, uh, like telocentric all these things you will be best observed in metaphase and the shortest uh, was actually anaphase shortest phase of cell division is anaphase and uh, during metaphase you can see highly condensed chromosomes and the chromatin material threads are arranged by gelation 
dehydration and foiling. So the chromosomal theory of inheritance was being given by Sutton and Boveri. So generally chromosomes in plants are larger than animals. Uh, I hope you all know this. But number of chromosomes is high in animals when compared to plants. So uh, the protozoa called Olocantha. Olocantha will be having the chromosomal of 1600. And uh, Ophioglossus, Ophioglossus, which is a pteridophyte. So this will be having a chromosomal number of 1,262. So actually in humans, we have 42 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes. In humans, we have 46 chromosomes. This is actually given by Tijo. So uh, the diploid, 2N means diploid and N means haploid. N means having single set of chromosomes. 2N means having two sets of chromosomes. So, and the number of species, the number of chromosomes will vary from each and every species. But for the particular species, the number of chromosomes will be static. For example, humans will be having 46 chromosomes, that is fixed. And Ophioglossus will be having 1,262 chromosomes, that is also fixed. Alokantha will be having 1,600 chromosomes, that is also fixed. And gametes of all diploid organisms will contain only single set, means haploid set of chromosomes. The number of chromosomes in a gamete, we call it as genome. We call it as genome. The number of chromosomes in gamete, we call it as genome. And at the same time, the complete set of chromosomes inherited as a unit from one parent, that is also called genome. Okay. So let's see the structure of chromosome. So we already have seen the structure of chromosome is best studied during metaphase. So the outermost proteinaceous covering, there is a sheet for chromosome, which we call it as pellicle. We will be finding very outer uh, pellicle. This is not a membrane. So this will form a sheet. Matrix will be the brown substance actually. So it consists of different enzymes, minerals, and water and proteins. So chromonema. Chromonema is actually uh, singular. We call it as chromonemata. Actually, it is very important. Genetically highly coiled thread, which is present throughout, like, for example, genetically highly coiled thread like this, present throughout the chromosome. We call it as chromonema. So like this, we have many chromonemas like this. So genetically coiled. So and small uh, beaded like things will be seen in between. We call it as chromomeres, small beaded like things. And the next thing is uh, the structural representation. This is kinetochore, the proteinaceous extension present in the uh, chromosome. This is mainly for the attachment of spindle fibers. That spindle fibers are uh, made up of microtubules, which is tubulin protein, which came from centrosomes. And uh, we have the chromonema, chromomeres. And we have the primary constriction. We otherwise call it as centromere. And here we have the secondary constriction. This is satellite. And here we have the telomere. And coming to the coiling. The coiling is seen two types. One is plectonemic coiling. Another one is paranemic coiling. So what is plectonemic coiling is? So actually in plectonemic coiling, uh, both the chromonema, what we have seen here inside the chromosome, the chromonemas are being tightly intertwined and we cannot separate easily. That type of coiling, we call it as plectonemic. 
Paranemic coiling is like uh, loosely, for example, if you see plectonemic, the coiling will be like this. So this coiling is very difficult to separate. And paranemic coiling will be like this. This is very easy to separate. And the kinetochore or the centromere, we call it as the primary extension. And coming to the each chromosome, they consist of two things. So for example, uh, you will be seeing, I'll give you one thing. So you could see this in the zygotene phase of meiosis too. Uh, this is actually, we call it as uh, tetrad. So tetrad, why we call it as tetrad is having four chromatids. So this is one chromatid, this is one chromatid, one, two, three, four. And the relationship between these chromatids, we call it as sister chromatids because these chromatids got attached with the uh, same centromere. And the relationship between this and this, we call it as uh, non-sister chromatids. Okay, and this we call it as Tetrad because having four chromatids. So this is sister chromatids and this is non-sister chromatids. And remember the best uh, chromosomal structure are studied uh, during metaphase. And next uh, kinetochores constitute the actual sites for the attachment of spindle fibers during cell division. And the centromeric DNA, we call it as the DNA present in this centromere. Okay. We call the DNA as alphoid DNA or heterochromic. So here it is darkly stained because it consists of heterochromic. And at this region of centromere, so which is uh, narrower than the remaining part. If you see the remaining part here, it is narrower. So that's why this is termed as primary constriction. Okay. And the next thing is we have the secondary constriction. So the secondary constriction is also called as, is also known as nucleolar organizer uh, region. So you can see the secondary constriction like this. So this part we call it as NOR, nucleolar organizing, organi organizer region, nucleolar organizer region and uh, satellite. So this, this part of the chromosome we call it as satellite. And this is present after the secondary constriction. This looks like a small uh, spherical part of the distal to the secondary constriction. So we call this chromosome alone as SAT chromosome. And this tip, we call it as telomere. So this is uh, very rich in guanine. This is very important point, very rich in guanine. And uh, this shows the polarity as well. They perform two important functions. One is uh, it will prevent the attached sticking of this chromatid and this chromatid and helps in attachment of nuclear envelope. And it consists of the enzyme called telomerase that helps, that is very similar type of ribozyme. Okay. And next coming to the types of chromosomes. And this is one chromosome. This is one more. And so this is metacentric. This is submetacentric. This is acrocentric. This is telocentric. If you see this, so. Uh, we otherwise call this as V, uh, v chromosome. This is L and this is J and this is I. So you can find the equal arms. So equal arm ratio will be there. 
and this you have unequal arm ratio and you can see the shape l one is lengthier and one is quite shorter here one is very small and one is lengthier so the more arm ratio will be there for acrocentric and telocentric almost the centromere is present on the tip that's why it is i and uh, so the chromosome is actually we have single arm so here almost it occupies the central portion we have a single arm and uh, this is very important point the arm ratio will be more for acrocentric and we'll see some of the number of chromosomes ascaris which is uh, diploid it is 2 and haploid it is 1 and we have the drosophila so drosophila it is 8 and haploid it will be 4 and we have uh, chimpanzees is 48 more than us 24 and here we have the homo sapiens humans homo sapiens which is 43 so 46 and we have 23 and allocantha we already have seen which is a protozoa which is 1600 obviously 800 will be the haploid and we have seen ophioglossus as well Uh, which is thousand uh, two hundred and sixty-two. So now we'll see the ultra structure of the chromosome. So the nucleosome model will be like bead and thread. We all know that. So that was first observed by Olin. Olin's et al. Et al. means their team. So this model is actually proposed by Korenberg. and thomas the most important and universally accepted model of chromosome is so this model you can see the dna as well as histone proteins so you can see here like uh, you will be having the dna here and dna will be making the rounds and here you will be having h1 and you have the h2a H two B, H three, and H four. The other side also you will be having that. So we call this as the nucleosome or histone octamer. We can uh, nucleosome consists of histone octamer. Histone octamer is actually formed by H two A, H two B, H three, H four, and this H one we call it as. linker d linker histone this h1 we call it as linker histone so actually that is the unit of chromatin is nucleosome only this we consider as unit and uh, each nucleosome consists of 200 base pairs and nucleosome we also call it as new body or gamma particle or ps particle and this nucleosome is considered as the structural unit of the chromosome the structural unit of chromosome is nucleosome so six nucleosome if it got super coil then we call it as solenoid and we have one more uh, name for this histone linker histone or sealing histone okay because it it binds this nucleosome that's why we call it as linker histone or sealing histone now let's see one very important topic that is giant chromosomes so that is giant chromosomes so what is this giant chromosomes so giant chromosomes are we have two types one is uh, polythene polythene chromosomes and other one is uh, lamb brush chromosome chromosomes first thing is terminology so why because these are giant or these are big chromosomes so polythene chromosomes is actually we call it as poly because it consists of many many strands of dna 
That's why we call it as polyteen chromosomes. Uh, you can see this polyteen chromosomes, especially in the salivary glands of diptera. Means flying, uh, wing, winged insects. Diptera will come from the winged insects. So extensively, it got studied in an organism, Drosophila. So Drosophila melanogaster. And why this uh, polyteen DNAs will be seen is, it will be especially seen during interphase. During interphase, the continuous division of the, continuous replication of DNA will take place. So in this, there will be more DNA content and less RNA content. Coming to the lampresh. So lampresh will be seen particularly in the immature oocytes. Immature oocytes of sharks, insects, amphibians. Whether it is tailed or non-tailed, reptiles, birds, which produce yolky egg. Yolky egg. So, vitellogenesis. The production of yolk, we call it as vitellogenesis. And next thing is, uh, so when it comes to the lamb brush, so it is mainly concerned with protein synthesis, vitellogenesis and RNA synthesis. Okay. So, and why we call it as lamb brush is, for example, I'll assume that we have a strand. So if I am taking microscopically this one, you will be finding a loop, chromatin loop. So if you observe this, this looks like a brush. That's why they named it as lamb brush. Okay, and this we call it as, so if you observe uh, microscopically the lamb brush, and you will be having like this. Right, and this we call it as chromonema, we all know. And this we call it as loop, chromatin loop, and you have the main axis. And actually, uh, this, uh, sorry, this side we have taken to polyte. So the polyteen chromosomes, we otherwise call it as Balbiani chromosomes because it is been first discovered by Balbiani in the year 1881. So actually it is first seen in diptera uh, salivary glands and it also seen in malvegian tubules, epithelial lining of drosophila for with all those things. Uh, we will be having, uh, we call it as Balbinian rings or Balbinian puffs. You can see this puff-like extension near the centromere. Because due to continuous replication of DNA, the puff-like appearance is being seen. Uh, and uh, here, there is concern with synthesis of mRNA and proteins, but more DNA content will be there when compared to RNA. And some other uh, karyotype. So what is the meaning of uh, karyotype? And we have an ideogram. So karyotype is nothing but the external morphology of chromosomes. For example, if you are telling this about the type of chromosomes, this is karyotype. So a specific species will be having what type of chromosomes that is karyotype. So karyotype will include a number of chromosomes, size of chromosomes, position of centromeres, Length of arms, secondary constrictions, banding, everything will come under karyotypes. Okay, so this karyotype ideogram is nothing but entire uh, set of chromosomes of an individual. We call it as ideogram. So these are uh, something about uh, it's a very very important uh, video about nucleus and chromosomes. So considering so far about from previous question papers, so this is the information so far I have gathered. So I hope this video will be very helpful for you. Thank you very much.